Hello there, it's Amy from Moonwindology.com and I want to cover some upcoming candidates in the elections that are coming up quite quickly in this month. And it's difficult to predict a winner when you don't have everyone's birth data, so I'm not really going to spend much time uh, trying to do that. What I want to do is see if we can uh, see the impact of the leader to perhaps help people vote. You never know what you're gonna get. So hopefully astrology can help in this regard and is a great opportunity to track how this works. So first up, Azerbaijan. A snap election was called because there was a recent development where Azerbaijan took control of the Karabakh region, if it said like that, I don't know a great deal about what's going on over there, so do forgive me if the information is incomplete or is wrong. Um, anyway, on to the stuff that I do understand. <laughs> so we've got Iliam Aliyev, um, the current leader of Azerbaijan. And of course, there will be more of the same uh, with him if he's voted back in. So let's have a look. The moon is in Gemini or it could be in Cancer and this will influence public opinion and seeing that he's been very popular I would wonder if he has a Cancer moon. Cancer is related to cities, towns and lands and this is really supportive of the family unit as well um, but I haven't been able to really find any information um, to support a Cancer moon. If he was Gemini uh, he would have focused on schooling, the media and public transport as major things in his um, that he wanted to cover. Rahu is in Cancer and this is about expansion so it's really good for property prices, cities and towns and he probably invested a lot of money into these areas and I would say that architecture may be quite the tourist attraction uh, in wealthy areas. Rahu is about success and it's the head moving forward and consuming so this is a sure sign of where the materialism is and it's not bad to be you know invested in towns and cities and agriculture but not agriculture um, architecture but that's just my opinion Pluto and Uranus in Leo is positive for aristocrats and leaders and it gives them a lot of power but there can be some corruption as well as sudden changes. Uranus is linked to plastic and this country does export a lot of the stuff. This sign is also about GDP per capita and so I would say there is the power that's being held by exporting items via air travel especially and it also provides good technology which is a very much a Uranus related thing. So this is bringing in a lot of wealth to the country. Venus and Neptune and Mercury, they're all in Libra, Libra and this is about social freedoms and the general happiness of the population. Mercury and Venus, they're very happy here. So this is positive for communications, for culture, and it's, it's very strong. Having both Neptune and Venus, this is so creative and very arty. And when you Google Azerbaijan, it's always full of color. And I would say this is really quite reminiscent of what's happening in this chart. Oil products can also play a huge part in what gives people their social freedoms too. Not sure how that works, but that's what the chart is saying. Mars and the Sun, they're in Scorpio. It's really hot. So I would say that under this leader, there can be a lot of heat in the science division. And I'm not quite sure what that means, but maybe it's hot products, um, you know, things that are smelted perhaps. The banking system will also move very quickly under him. And I'd say it's quite strong. It's good circulation in the economy, which is always a good thing. Mars is also related to the police and military, so that can be strong and also very reactive and work properly. Leaders could be involved with secret agencies though, and there can be some problems with espionage. Saturn, K2 and Jupiter are in Capricorn, and Capricorn is your government, business and authority. And you're going to have a lot of hard work going on here, but there's also scandal, and I really wouldn't be surprised if there's some kind of drug use going on uh, associated with the government, or there's a, there is something related to, to drugs, um, 
or maybe they're cracking down on drugs or maybe it's pharmaceuticals but they do prioritize farmers and it's good at retaining wealth but there can be an arrogance from the government and they can snub opportunities with foreign leaders and you know with foreign contracts and affairs but as I said, I know very little about him and it's hard, really hard to get solid information on him and how he has behaved during his reign. So let me know how I did if you are well acquainted with Azerbaijani information and politics and lifestyle. So then we've got the other candidates. So there's Zahid or Oruch. Mars is in Aries and this is great for the military and the police. The military will be really strong and there's quick reactions to threats and to problems and that could the, the things that could impact the, na the nation. This guy just won't sit around idly and watch the world go by. He wants to take action. Saturn is in Taurus and this could be a problem with farming and investments as well as small business and Saturn tends to slow down and delay things so there could be some problems with national wealth and there could be some security issues medicines could struggle to be shifted and you know there could be problems with dispensing medicines and mortgages as well K2 is in cancer you would probably see a lot less money going into towns, cities, families, and land, and it could devalue these things as well. The malefic planets always have to be somewhere, but this can create fires as well. So there could be some drought and there could also be something related to, to heat. And there's a lot of heat in this chart, so this, you know, there could be fire under this sky. Moon is in Cancer or it could be in Leo. And when the moon is close to a node, it can sometimes create deep problems and a feeling of being unsupported. And there will be some fluctuations in this house and with land prices. If it's in Leo, there could be a large following of uh, royalty and the rich. And as the moon is so bright, it's good for the GDP per capita. And it could lead him to be a popular leader. Pluto and Uranus are in Virgo, so there's a lot of control from the police and the media industry. There can be sudden changes and inventions around medicine and health too. Neptune, it's in Scorpio. There can be confusion and scandal around banks, uh, science, things like that, but plastic exports um, and oil, they're really, really important. Jupiter is in Sagittarius and this is really strong here. You could see a lot of immigration, tourists and money that comes from that kind of thing. Laws can be quite lenient and airports will be active. Sun, Mercury and Rahu, they're in Capricorn. This is very strong and ambitious for the government and they like to communicate. The media will be very tightly controlled and the government you know, he, he would have a huge push to have a huge government and it probably, most definitely, will cost a lot more money. Um, Venus is in Aquarius and I believe this to mean that there can be culture that is weakened from th foreign threat and there can be mass immigration, humanitarian ventures or just selling things off on the st stock ex exchange. Yeah, I'd probably say that there's a lot of money that might be going out of the country in the form of aid with this placement because he wants to give to humanitarian causes and it's also associated with foreign investment as well so oh my gosh this is so difficult to say razi nurulayev nurulayev razi nurulayev okay in this picture or in his picture on wikipedia i actually thought he was morpheus from the matrix so let's have a look is he offering red pills or blue pills saturn and mercury are in aries and i think that this could be that there's cuts to the military and so there wouldn't be so much of a quick reaction to or response to threats saturn's also debilitated here as well so it makes it quite weak 
there's a lot of talk and communication and that's the first port of call however i don't think that the government would be so convincing with their words this is a government that aren't prepared and they think they are smarter than everybody else and they can just talk this, their way out of anything moon is either in Taurus or Gemini and Taurus this is going to be really great for popularity as well as the stability and it's great for farming in Gemini we have a uh, strong media and public transport should be very supportive of the people and the movement around the country education can be somewhat wavering as can communications as well then we move on to K2 is in Cancer and this is going to be you know potentially bring heat waves and problems with house and land prices as well as family happiness. Pluto and Uranus is in Virgo and like before that is about power and control, the service, health and medical industry. Jupiter and Neptune they're in Scorpio and this is great for the banks um, and there's a bit of a push for the import or the export sorry of plastics and oils and he'll get really, things really moving with the exports and trade. Jupiter and Mars have a Paravartana yoga and this makes them so much stronger so this is great for exports and banks mars in sagittarius the military will be highly governed by the law and perhaps in religion as well there could be a lot of movement of tourists and foreigners coming into the country rahu is in capricorn so this will mean that ambition is mostly directed at the government and this could result in a lot of spending on the government as opposed to reinvestment in the country Venus is in Aquarius so like the previous guy there's a lot of love for humanitarianism and there's a lot of acceptance of foreigners from immigration to external contracts and that may take it away from the people. The sun is in Pisces and this is related to drugs, crime and the underground and as the sun is here there can be a lot of power in this area and the leaders can get involved in a bit of criminal activity and there can also be rich foreigners taking up space and moving into leadership positions behind the scenes. So then our final candidate is Gudra uh, Hasanguliev. Hasangulev? Gudrat Hasangulev. Yeah, I'll do. <laughs> Jupiter is in Aries, so there can be some kind of religious or military provocation, provocation or something to do with the law, and there can be a lot of money that's made through military or weaponry. And there could be the selling of weapons as well. Rahu is in Taurus and this is significantly impactful to farming and small business and this is great for those type of things. If you live in the country and work the land, good rat could be good for you. Pluto and Uranus are in Leo so there's a lot of power and instability, or there's, there is power but instability uh, that is going to the rich and the royals. I don't think they have royals over there, but it's just people who are of high esteem. I should use that instead. Mars is in Virgo. Mars isn't so happy here, so the police and the medical industry, they can be a bit heavy handed and there can be some unhappiness and perhaps even a little bit of striking. Neptune is in Libra and this creates confusion in social structure and culture and there can be scandal and confusion. Then we move on to K2 in Scorpio. There's a lost bankers and also specialists and the scientists as well. They're important elements of society and this can be quite problematic. If the banks start to collapse it's not great. Um, the moon it's either in Sagittarius or Scorpio and if the moon is in Scorpio it is gonna create some horrendous instability in the financial climate and it will be um, all that the public will probably be able to focus on. Venus and Mercury are in Sagittarius and this is a position of law, GDP per capita and religion and there can be a lot of media attention on this um, but there can be also laws that affect public transport, personal transport and the upper um, class. Hospitality, that could have some issues um, 
as well as investors could have problems too. The sun is in Capricorn and this shows that the government will be very powerful and the public won't have much power in return. It's a little bit, it's, it just gives a lot of power to, to government. And then we've got Saturn in Aquarius and this really will reduce the amount of aid going out the country and there's also limited foreign interest um, and f limited foreign affairs. So this isn't great for foreign alliance or even the stock exchange. Next up, Pakistan. Um, so their election, that is going to be, when is their election? So that's on the 8th of February, 2024. And my next video, I want to look at Imran Khan. Um, so do look out for that. Uh, Nawaz Sharif. Uh, he's got Rahu in Aries. So I would say that he's particularly interested in military action and investing tons of money into the military and the police force. The responses from him to attack or invasion it can be quite intense as well uranus is in gemini sorry i said attack or invasion i'm like i'm in <laughs> that's not gonna i don't see that necessarily happy happening it's threat i should have used the word threat now moving on to uranus uh being in gemini this is going to give a lot of power to electronic media as well as causing a lot of changes in news and reporting. There could be a rebellion from news against him as well. Um, but yeah, this is this is very good for... This could be something to do with electric cars as well. Um, as soon as Gemini is all about your, your, your travel, it could be a lot of electric travel. Um, Pluto is in Cancer, so there could be some control within the family, home and the housing as well as the land. There can be corruption um, around this area as well. Saturn is in Leo and this is great for minimising people who are powerful leaders and the wealthy can really take a hit during this time. Neptune's in Virgo. And this can create confusion with food and services in general and there can be confusion within law enforcement and medicine. K2 and the moon are in Libra so this is problematic for culture and social structure. The moon isn't so happy, oh it isn't sorry, it isn't unhappy in Libra but it just doesn't like being with K2 so there can be opportunities for spirituality um, but it's confusion uh, to the public as well and there can be a the public can feel pretty abandoned or lost um venus is in scorpio so there's a lot of culture art and beauty that can be absorbed owned by bankers and specialists and scientists that can interfere with culture as well the sun mars Jupiter and Mercury they're in Sagittarius and this is part of the zodiac which deals with law and religion Be but because there's such focus on this house I see religion and law being quite powerful and strong under this leader so then we've got Bilawal Bhutto Zadari oh he's quite young <laughs> 35 years young so uh, compared to everybody else he's incredibly young so Jupiter is in Taurus so this is really good for farming and small business and there can be a boon here um, that would just be great for the small economy um, Venus is in Capricorn so there can be a lot of influence in the government in concerns to culture and that can bring sometimes a capitalist mentality um, and a bit of greed and indulgence as well but there's lots of money going into the government and progress from capitalism and I say capitalism because Capricorn is very much about working hard um, and business and then you look at Venus it's very materialistic so when you put those two things together that's how I've got got to that so k2 is in leo and that's not such a good um match for the rich as lenders and stockbrokers they may start to struggle a bit but hopefully that's just due to the common person being better off you know less lending maybe then we have the sun in virgo and this is great for public servants and law enforcement but there's a lot of power here and i wonder if this might be his main 
focus to get the services really going. And this is also the restaurant industry. So seeing as Virgo and Taurus are in good shape, this is really positive for business. Pluto and Mercury are in Libra. They can be controlled to the social structure as well as culture being influenced by powerful people. And there can be a lot of influence from the media as well. And there can be some problems with crime and corruption, but you know, this is this is looking at the poor side of the of the chart. Um, and every chart has one. The Moon, Saturn, Neptune and Uranus are in Sagittarius so there is a lot of wavering confusion, sudden change uh, in religion and law and I'm under the impression that Pakistan is quite heavily religious um, and with the, with the culture being impacted there could be some issues and changes in religion. He may move away from more traditional values and try to instill something a little bit different. Rahu is in Aquarius and you know there can be lots of agreements with foreigners and outside alliances but there can be investment in humanitarian ventures, uh, ventures and giving a lot of money away in aid. Then we've got Mars in Pisces and this is the area of crime so I would say that there could be there could be a bit of an issue with violent crime and police spending a lot of time trying to deal with that um, and in some cases there can also be a problem with foreigners. Uh, then we've got, oh my gosh I don't know how to say this middle bit, Fazal Ur Remen. I <laughs> I'm just going to go with it. Venus is in Aries and Venus doesn't particularly like being in this sign and that could bring some kind of cultural kind of melding with military or a fast reaction or a little bit of anger but it's it's quite happy in this sign so it's probably not going to be anything that's overly negative or out of control there could be a lot of interest in policing jupiter is in taurus and this is great for small business and farming food is abundant who doesn't want that mars sun mercury and uranus they're all in Jerem Jer jeremy gemini <laughs> and this is really really strong for intercity travel and also the media a lot of money can be spent on public transport and there can be positive impacts to the environment there's a lot of changes um, but there can also be policing in this area as well um, communications are strong and this could propel the motor industry for pakistan i don't know how that is getting on but um as far as i'm aware there's no big car manufacturers that come from pakistan that you know make cars that are over here but that could well change um pluto and k2 are in cancer there's control over the family unit and there can be drops in house and land prices that are controlled by people in power you know i don't see this necessarily being a positive thing for you know family and people just living their little lives at home but there we go the moon's in leo and this can create some fluctu uh, fluctuation with lending and also the rich the value of money can be all over the place with this neptune and saturn they are in virgo so there can be um there can be cutbacks to public services in general and that can cause problems for law and health rahu is in capricorn and this is big government which is focused very much so on their own ambitious but ambitions they wish to dominate and control anyways I hope you have enjoyed my analysis. It's been pretty long because I had a lot to cover and it'll be super interesting to see how this plays out and whether, you know, I read these uh, the people as options correctly. As I've said, I'm certainly going to be using my technique to make my assessment of politicians as I really think that astrology it can offer a more honest clue into what you can actually expect from a leader. Um, you know, a manifesto doesn't factor in the lies nor the unforeseeable events, but I think astrology can. So thank you so much for your time today and I will see you next week. Thank you very much. Like, subscribe, uh, go to my website and book an appointment. Thank you very much. Bye.